So, um, so welcome to the Straight Up Solar Power, um, Power Tesla Powerwall webinar. That's a mouthful. Um, my name is Natalie Lucas. I am the content man manager for Straight Up Solar. I've been working um, in Straight Up Solar since 2017. Uh, I was first in this uh, the like solar support specialist uh, like department, uh, helping folks answer their questions about solar. Um, and the person who's going to be giving you a lot of the information is David Downs. So I'll let you introduce yourself, David. Thank you. Um, well, as the bullet point says on there, I'm six kilowatt solar owner. I've been in solar since, uh, gosh, 2013. And um, I'm now the sales director for Straight Up Solar. Great. Thank you. Um, so we really uh, are focused on making sure that we're creating a path for clean energy and a sustainable economy as Straight Up Solar. And that's behind everything that we do for our shared future. Uh, we live by several uh, values called the clear values. It keeps our vision clear. Um, we put community first. We lead like the solar tribe, which is a group of folks who um, really want to promote solar throughout the world. We educate people on solar and um, clean energy, which is like what we're doing right here. Um, we are advocates for um, clean energy and we do a lot of that um, policy work in Missouri and Illinois. We respect the planet and uh, people, and then we ha are excellent in everything that we do, or we try to be. Um, just about Straight Up Solar, we founded it in 2006, and we serve Missouri and Illinois. Um, we have 75 folks on our staff, and um, we are uh, part of a, a collaborative called Amicus, which like is a network of solar companies across the nation that allows us to share best practices. We have a lot of really other great things about us, including the fact that we're a Tesla Powerwall premium installer. So I'm going to let David kind of take it from here. Great. Thank you, Natalie. So just to jump in, this is why we're all here today to learn more about this Tesla Powerwall. I want to give you a quick idea. What does it mean to say that we're a certified Tesla Powerwall installer? Well, there's a couple of things. First and foremost, um, our crews that install these systems, literally wire them into your home, um, attended training with Tesla uh, in, I think it was in Texas, uh, <coughs> excuse me, about a year ago. So the folks that are there at your home to wire the system have had training directly from Tesla. It also means that every electrical design that we do that includes a power wall, we send to Tesla. Their electrical engineers review our electrical design, incorporating the battery and approve it. And of course, if there's changes or edits, we work with them to do that. So we've now installed, uh, I believe about 30 total power walls as a company. Um, so we've got, Crews are well experienced, well trained, and we're always getting that Tesla approval. So that's what it really means to be a certified Powerwall installer. So again, one of the things I'm sure everybody's here about, the rude question is, and well, this first one, and I'm sure the next one is what does it cost, which we're going to get to. What are the benefits of a Tesla Powerwall? Um, so let's go to the next slide, Natalie. So let's make sure I want to cover this top point. Um, batteries always pair with solar in order to get the federal tax credit. So I'm sure when you look at the finances for a battery, getting that 26% tax credit is a big part of the savings that come with this. So we want to make sure everybody understands in order to get that tax credit, the Tesla Powerwall has to be paired with solar. And in fact, the way we wire it in is that the solar feeds the battery that's how it charges from the solar power. So I want to get that out of the way, but that's a very important thing to understand to get the 26% federal tax credit. So the big battery, battery benefits with the Tesla Powerwall are these three right on the screen. Number one, you extend your solar power into the evening uh, and that system is active every day. So the idea there, and we'll talk a little bit more about this, it's just that instead of sending power backwards out through your meter or what we call in the solar, so that's net metering. With a battery, you're now that power goes into your battery and you use it in the evening. And in fact, some homes have enough power in their power wall, you can use it through the evening into the morning and then sort of rinse and repeat that cycle of recharging the battery every day. And at that point, your home is, gosh, within a sliver of being energy independent. <laughs> now, number two battery benefit is backup protection. Now, this is something that only happens for a lot of people 
once every few years. In, in the Midwest, our grid is generally pretty stable. Um, number three, this is another benefit that a lot of folks really connect with. The software in the Tesla Powerwall has what they call um, an option called storm mode. So they get severe weather alerts from the National Weather Service or from NOAA. So let's say today is Saturday. And if there's a storm predicted for Monday, the Powerwall can go into storm mode. And so it prioritizes the solar power to fill the battery today and tomorrow so that if the storm arrives on Monday, as predicted, and knocks out lines or blows down a transformer or whatever, causes an outage, your battery is fully charged because it spent the last two days in storm mode charging to 100% so you'd be fully protected. So those are the three main battery benefits. Now let's talk about this in detail, a little bit this idea of backup power during an outage. So what happens is during a grid outage, um, not only does the battery kick on, um, but it also the next day, if the grid is still down that day after the storm, the solar inverter is wired to be powered from the power wall. So now, doesn't matter what inverter you have, a solar edge, end phase, SMA inverter, whatever you have, that inverter can now run from the power wall. So you get the dual benefit of you get your solar back up and running, creating power, which can now charge your power wall again. So even day three after a storm, if you have sunny days following the storm, you could again have your solar working, power your battery, your house has power all night from the power wall. Um, and so that, in that way, it's a great system uh, to protect you in an outage. Now, when that battery switchover happens, the Tesla battery backup provides a seamless transition. So it happens so fast, it's within milliseconds. And you don't even, that means you don't even have to reset a clock in your home. And then finally, um, there's a mobile app provided by Tesla. And that software gives you all kinds of management about what the power wall is doing and how the power flows are work, um, moving related to your solar, the grid in your home and the battery. And we'll see examples of this a little, uh, a few slides from now. Okay, so how does the power wall work with solar? And Natalie, do you want to do a poll here? So what we're going to do is we just want to see how many of you have solar and are looking into it just so that we have a better understanding of the audience that we're talking to. So a little thing is going to come up on your screen if you could answer it and then I'll share the results with you all as well. I love it. Lots of solar customers here today. That's great. And David, when you think enough folks have um, responded, you're welcome to end the poll <coughs> for the results. Okay. Well, we've got 40 out of 50 or 80% have voted now. So it looks like 65% um, or 26 people have solar on their home already. Um, four people that are looking into solar for their home, five that do not have solar, and five, another five that are just learning about this right now. So thank you for that. So that gives you a feel, everybody, of kind of who's here today. Um, but I like to see that we've got a lot of folks that have already made the good decision to go solar um, and now are looking at the battery option. So I will click the share results option. And David, as you're doing that, there's one question that is pretty has been asked several times that you might want to speak to, and that is if you add power walls to an existing system is the federal tax credit available in that situation? I'm sorry, Shannon, say that again, if they... If a, if a battery, if a, ba a power wall um, is added to an existing solar system, is the federal tax credit again available in that transaction? Yes, <laughs> yes it is. Because again, the way we wire the system is that it's the battery is charging from the solar array. So that's the key uh, design element that allows the battery to collect that 26% uh, tax credit. Okay. Um, all right, I'm ready to move on, Natalie. So let's look at an installation here. Um, what does it mean to have this battery plus solar together? Um, 
Again, we talked about this idea a little bit before. The first bullet point there, solar plus battery, or test the power wall um, solution installed in your home. The excess energy from the sun fills up your battery for nighttime use. Very straightforward. Now, that means you're using the sun's energy for most of the day. And again, depending on your home and your battery configuration, it could be that that cycle can happen every day for most of the year. Now, as anybody knows, if you get into the details of energy and energy use and management, it gets complicated between summer and winter time, how the, the equipment you have in your home to generate heat or cool your home. But again, in this installation, we've got two power walls um, in the photo to the right on this slide. And that means with two power walls, this customer could run their entire home or have their entire um, electrical system backed up by those two power walls. Now, here's a great graph that we got right from Tesla. It does a good job of illustrating what I just described. So the photo on the left is like the 26 people that responded on our poll that have solar. This is your house today. The gray line represents um, uh, the travels across the you know, horizontal axis is energy consumption in your home. And you can see um, on the right side of that graph, there's the peak energy usage. That's the evening in most homes. Your TV's on, you're cooking a meal, you might run a load of laundry. But what happens with solar is you generate that peak power at noon in the middle of the day and everything above your home's consumption at that point gets net metered. That's net metering today. But now as you move to the right, when you have a power wall installed, instead of that power going out to the grid, that's that light blue area that's now white, now it's going to charge your battery. Now when you come home, your, the sun goes down, your battery kicks on, and now you're running from effectively solar power stored in your battery through the evening. And again, depending on your home and your energy consumption, that power could carry you all the way through the day, into the evening, and to the next morning. Now let's look at what does an install look like? And it looks like, Natalie, we've got another poll here. Okay, it's the question that everybody's thinking right from the beginning, what do we think this thing costs? Um, you can see there's three choices, five to 15, 15 to 25, and 25 to 35. Now I guess in some ways this is a little bit of a trick question because you might guess that power walls are modular, you can add more. Um, so it does, of course, cover a, a, a wide range. Um, so we've got, looks like people are voting in. And right now it looks like the majority of people are clicking the first option, the five to 15. And <coughs> we've got uh, 36 folks have chimed in. I'm gonna end the poll and I click share results. Now does ever, can you guys all see that on your side? the poll results. Natalie, yes. can you see it on your side? It sounds like folks can. I can't oh. because we're on the same host, but it okay. sounds like people saw it. Good, good. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Um, so I'll close out that poll. So, um, so the folks that clicked that 5 to 15, that's a good guess. This is a single power wall install, and this is about a $15,000 installation. Now, this is a very important point, and if you take nothing else away from this presentation this morning, I want you to remember this. A Tesla power wall is not a plug and play system. Every, virtually every other battery that most people have come across in their life is some version of plug and play in a laptop, in a phone, uh, uh, yeah, I think of the car battery that I put under the hood and when they get, those are all simple, just plug in or wire, two wires connected to it. Power wall is different than that. The power wall has to be connected so that it can power either partial or the entire system for your home. So that means working in your main electrical panel. And as the bullet point says on the screen here, every house has a different electrical setup, which affects the design and pricing of your system. Now, again, if you're like me, you think, well, gosh, doesn't every panel have that gray box in the basement? Well, yes, but you may know those comes in different sizes. There's 100 amp, 125 amp, 200 amp. 
large houses or even commercial installations can have 400 amp panels. And then we see lots of people have sub panels in their houses. There's many, many different electrical configurations in homes. And so one of the important thing that you can take away from this photo um, is that you see how tidy everything looks. Well, that, what you can't see in this is basically the before, this was a customer in St. Charles County um, in the St. Louis area that installed the single Tesla Powerwall, but um, Mr. Stan Dultz on the right there, his electrical room, if you will, his electrical panel was quite messy when we got there. There was a lot of wires coming and going from all different directions. And we told him, well, we're gonna have to do some additional work. And in Mr. Dultz's case, that included that gray vertical uh, box on the left. That's his new main panel. Then you can see the, um, what we call the, the trough that goes across. That's where all these different boxes, kind of the wiring feeds into there. And then you can see that single wire that connects the trough to the panel. That's how all that power feeds over to the main. So the other thing that's important to understand is that um, behind Mr. Dultz's head is his solar edge inverter. And that is behind the Tesla gateway, which is another box that goes in with a Tesla battery installation. And so that means his power wall can power both the solar inverter and it's feeding into his um, uh, main panel. Or in this case, with a single power wall, one of those boxes is his critical loads or essential loads panel. So that's what, that's what a, uh, a power wall installation looks like and a sample pricing uh, for a single power wall. Okay, so as this is a funny graphic. I'm actually gonna start on the right side. Um, the right side is the critical load only panel. And that means if you're installing a single power wall, you have to do that, well, I guess it's the second gray box on the wall labeled essential loads. So what you have to do with a single power wall is decide what are the most important things you want to run in a backup scenario. Now, most people are immediately gonna say, my kitchen, I don't wanna lose my fridge or my freezer contents, okay? So the wire that serves your kitchen circuits has to be pulled into that essential loads panel. Now you also decide most people are gonna want a bathroom, a living area, your Wi-Fi router, your modem, your computer, maybe your TV, your DVR, all the different things that you would consider essential in a power outage, those loads go into that essential loads panel. Now, if you switch to the left side of that graphic, if you go with two power walls, now you get rid of that essential loads panel and everything from the, all the power from the power wall feeds directly straight up into the main panel. Now your entire house is being backed up. And that includes your air conditioner, which is for most homes, the highest draw device uh, in, your, in your panel. Okay, so is a Tesla Powerwall battery right for you? It is, as you can see here, if you want to consume more of your solar energy, take control of your power, have a redundant backup. We've had a couple of customers install Powerwalls because they even had other generators uh, equipment on their property, but they wanted a redundant backup of a different technology that they didn't have to rely on diesel or propane or natural gas fuel. Um, and the last point is really key. If you live um, or a customer of a utility that doesn't have a, what I would call a favorable net metering policy, well, if you put a power wall in, you're now tipping the scales in your favor because what it means is you're gonna net meter almost nothing to that utility because again, you make power with your solar, you store the power in your battery, in your power wall, and you kind of tip the scales in your favor with net metering. And then again, on the right side of the screen here, is a battery right for you? Well, it is if you don't want that noisy generator backup, because we know lots of folks have uh, natural gas or diesel power generators, um, and they also don't like to store that diesel or gasoline on their property. All right, now let's watch a video from Tesla.
Thank you, Natalie. So now we're going to look at a couple screenshots from this. So this all comes from Tesla's uh, app that you can install on your phone. Um, so here, let's look at the details. In the morning, the solar is waking up. So your solar in the early morning might only be generating just a small amount of power, 0.4 kW. So that power is going to feed your home. And you're also going to get a little power from the grid, 0.8 kilowatts of power. And now important note at the bottom, the power wall is only 30% charged because you used that power the night before. So now you start out the morning, solar's waking up, your battery is on a, a low charge state. Now you go to the afternoon and now in the afternoon, you're gonna get solar is now producing at its peak. In this case, it's five kilowatt array. It's feeding the home and this scenario is modeled probably like my house normally works in a non-COVID <laughs> environment. Um, my house uses very little energy during the day when I'm gone at work. So in this case, the solar is putting most of its power into the power wall, 4.7 kilowatts. So now in the afternoon, the battery is charged up to 87%. And now at night, again, solar, you can see now, is quiet on the graph. There's no color around it. It's not generating. But now you're pulling 2.5 kilowatts of power to power your home, the lights, the TV, um, some appliances in your kitchen, but your power wall is 92% charged or at that very high state because it's charged up all day from the solar. So now the power wall can run your home at night. Now, again, all of this is, it's different for every house. It's different for, for instance, if I have a small air conditioner versus somebody who has a larger house and has a four ton air conditioner, then of course, that's gonna drain the power wall faster. Um, it also depends on where you keep your thermostat set. So <laughs> I've talked to <coughs> many people and they say, well, I try to be efficient. I set my AC to 74 or 76. I've had other people say, no, no, I keep it at 78. And I've had other people say, no, no, I keep it at 68. So depending on where you run your air conditioner and how long it runs and the size of that unit, that's gonna determine all those energy consumption things are gonna determine how quickly you uh, draw down or, or use your battery. So this is a great little tool that uh, Tesla has put on their webpage because I'm sure everyone will wanna play around with this. It's titled, how long will a power wall last in an outage? Because what you really wanna see is if I start turning on and off appliances here, the things that I wanna have on during a power outage, how long can my Tesla wall, power wall run those things? So if you look on here, they're just, these icons are just click them to turn them on and off. So you can see right now we've got coffee, toast, take a shower, wash clothes. Um, we've got all of our electronic devices turned on, the TV, the Xbox, the charge the laptop, play a game. We've also got very important, keep the house running. We've got the fridge, the lights, and the Wi-Fi on. And so one power wall one single power wall will run your house for more than a day and a half, one hour and 17 minutes. Now, I want you guys to be very careful about this. If you go and play around with this website, the biggest factor that changes things here is if you turn the AC on and the, the website doesn't do this, but that means you have to have two power walls. And that's because the startup amperage that an air conditioning unit pulls to get going it, it exceeds the amperage of that single power wall. So you have to have two if you want whole home backup with the air conditioner. But now you can see with two power walls, even with your AC running, you're gonna get, again, about a day and a half of usage where the grid is down and your house would function seamlessly uh, with those two power walls for a day and a half. And then again, if you have solar, and the sun is shining, very important, but if the sun is shining, like now we've had last day or two, we've had nice uh, sunny days, but the three days before that in the St. Louis area, we had lots of clouds and rain. So again, it's all gonna depend on what's happening with the weather cycle and um, your energy usage about how long the power wall is gonna last. But we'll have this link in the chat so you can follow up and play around with this a little bit. And there, yeah, Natalie was clicking, that's another one. If you want to, um, as they put it on there, top off a Tesla, if you want to charge your home, or excuse me, charge your car from your home uh, from a Tesla Powerwall, that is indeed possible. Um, but that's another very high draw device. And also, I just did see an update, I think two days ago. 
Tesla is going to be enabling very soon two-way charging from their cars, both to charge the car and then now, and this is a really exciting idea, if you have a Tesla, you could pull your car into the garage and now power your home. So that's, um, that's exciting and that's one of the fun things about being in solar and energy is there's always new things happening. So Natalie, thank you for that quick demo and visit to the um, how long will my power last, power wall last page. Um, and then do we have, yeah, here we go. So how long will single power wall last with AC running? This is our next poll. There you go. I love to see those answers pointing. It cannot power the AC alone. That's right. <laughs> a little bit of a trick question after we just went through those slides, but that's right. If you want your AC to run in a power outage, you have to have those two power walls. That's very important. So let me end that poll and share those results. And then uh, Natalie, if you can take us to the next slide. Okay, one more thing. Um, we also, we spent a lot of time talking about um, essential load panels with a single power wall system. And we do offer this additional product here. This is called a Lumen Smart Panel. And what the Lumen Panel does, it basically takes your old electrical panel and makes it intelligent. It means you can control it from a web app on your phone. And so what it can do is it can be programmed or do what they call automatic load shedding. And that's a fancy way of saying, I can turn on the device when I want it to run and then turn it off. I can turn on my air conditioner if I want it to run two hours and turn it off. Or if I want to make sure my kids aren't running the Xbox and draining my power wall, I can turn the Xboxes off. So you can switch on and off at your control electrical circuits uh, in your home. So that's an additional box, additional piece of equipment uh, uh, outside of a Tesla power wall. Um, but that product is available. Um, and all of our project developers can talk to you about the uh, unique capabilities of that Lumen Smart Panel. Okay, here's uh, one more um, installation photo we wanna share with you, just to give you an example here. This was our crew in uh, the, out of our Bloomington Normal Office did this installation. You can see the top left, this customer has a uh, substantial solar array with three inverters. And now he's got three power walls. So his home on uh, when the sun is shining is really just running on, on an energy independent basis. Um, so in that scenario, he can back up his entire panel, his entire house. And as we saw that, how long will power wall run? You could play around with that later today. You can see three power walls will run your house uh, really for more than two days. And now as an example though, for what that costs, that's a $36,000 installation to do those three power walls. Now, of course, everybody knows you can get that 26% federal tax credit. Um, so that takes a big chunk out of those installation numbers. Okay. And then finally, when you think about those numbers, and I realize we make no um, effect, we, we make no effort to hide the fact this is an expensive product. We understand that. It's a substantial investment in your home. But we do have a great way to pay for it. Um, many of you are, are existing solar customers are probably familiar with Clean Energy Credit Union. This is a credit union that was created to do what traditional banks don't, and that is offer very advantageous low rates to help fund a uh, clean energy revolution. So <clears throat> the loan that we most commonly use is 12 years at 2.99%. And using that loan, a single power wall installation would run you about uh, anywhere between $83 and $110 a month, depending on your configuration at your home. So that's a great solution to uh, finance uh, the installation of a power wall. Okay, um, the main uh, point on this slide, I wanna point everybody to the bottom. If you already have a solar array, um, when you reach out to us, we'd ask that you have your electrical one line ready for a quote. And if you did solar with straight up solar, <laughs> then you should have gotten that in your closeout packet or your uh, user's manual, um, a copy that was in there, or we can look it up for you. Um, but that's gonna be the first thing we're gonna need to look at when we talk about uh, a, incorporating a Tesla Powerwall into your system. So these other four, uh, five steps up here is just the normal process of how we work through with a customer. We'll get basic information from you. You receive a customized proposal. You work with a project manager once you decide to move forward. 
we go through the engineering and permitting process. You get installed, energized, and <laughs> I had to uncover it. Number five, of course, enjoy your new solar array. Okay, and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention our four continue, our, uh, concurrently running Grow Solar programs. Um, so we have Grow Solar St. Louis, Grow Solar Metro East, um, the Solarize Urbana-Champaign program, and then Solarize Southern Illinois. So these are programs that we run with the um, Midwest Renewable Energy Association out of Wisconsin. Um, we were the sole contractor um, awarded to these systems and we're very proud and happy to be doing all four of these uh, programs and batteries are included in those programs. So that's a great way to participate in a group by situation, get a, uh, a great um, fair price for your system and receive a rebate by doing that. Okay, so that's um, enough of me. I'm sure you guys have a lot of questions. Um, you can see we're sharing a uh, link up there. And then if you want to reach out, there's an email address, communications at Straight Up Solar. And um, now I think I'll hand it back to Natalie and we'll go to uh, Q&A. And I appreciate also a special shout out to Shannon Fulton, who I think has been handling a lot of our Q&As, our chat messages as we've been going. 